Hi, welcome to our brand new Microsoft Azure Administrator EZ104 Practice Questions 2022. In this video, we are going to discuss all the dummy questions of the Microsoft EZ104 exam. I am your host Neetu Rai from Up Degree, and let's get started. Question 16. You have an app named App1 that runs on an Azure web app named Web App 1. The developers at your company upload an update of App 1 to a Git repository named Git 1. Web App 1 has the deployment slots shown in the following table. You need to ensure that the App 1 update is tested before the update is made available to users. Which two actions should you perform? Each correct answer presents part of the solution. Now, the options are Option A. Swap the slots. Option B. Deploy the app 1, update to web app 1 prod and then test the update. Option C. Stop web app 1 prod. Option D. Deploy the app 1 update to web app 1 test and then test the update. Option E. Stop web app 1 test. And the correct answer is option A and D. Swap the slots and deploy the app 1 update to web app 1 test and then Test the update. Explanation Number 1. Deploy the app to Web App 1 test, which is a staging environment, and test it there. Number 2. Once the test is successful, swap the slots so the new changes will be available under production. Question 17. You plan to deploy three Azure virtual machines named VM1, VM2, and VM3. The virtual machines will host a web app named app1 you need to ensure that at least two virtual machines are available if a single azure data center becomes unavailable what should you deploy now the options are option a all three virtual machines in a single availability zone option b all virtual machines in a single availability set option c each virtual machine in a separate availability zone option d each virtual machine in a separate availability set and the correct answer is option C each virtual machine in a separate availability zone question 18 you have an Azure subscription that contains an Azure virtual machine named VM1 VM1 runs a financial reporting app named app1 that doesn't support multiple active instances at the end of each month CPU uses for VM1 peaks when app 1 runs. You need to create a scheduled runbook to increase the processor performance of VM1 at the end of each month. What tasks should you include in the runbook? Now the options are Option A. Add the Azure Performance Diagnostic Agent to VM1. Option B. Modify the VM size property of VM1. Option C. Add VM1 to a scale set. Option D. Increase the vCPU quota for the subscription. Option E. Add a desired state configuration DSC extension to VM1. And the correct answer is option B. Modify the VM size property of VM1. Explanation. Here we need to modify the size of the VM to increase the number of vCPUs assigned to the VM. This can be included as a task in the runbook. The VM size property can be modified by a runbook that is triggered by metrics, but you can schedule it monthly. C. Schedule vertical scaling could be a solution, but then you don't need a scheduled runbook at. It states that it doesn't support multiple active instances. Scale set is not an option. E. DSC is only useful to keep the resources on a VM, OS, file shares, etc in a consistent state, not to change VM properties. Question 19. You have an Azure subscription. You have an on-premises virtual machine named VM1. The settings for VM1 are shown in the exhibit. Click the exhibit tab. You need to ensure that you can use the disk attached to VM1 as a template for Azure virtual machines. What should you modify on VM1? Now, the options are 
ऑप्शन ए द मेमोरी ऑप्शन बी द नेटवर्क अडेप्टर्स ऑप्शन सी द हार्ड ड्राइव ऑप्शन डी द प्रोसेसर ऑप्शन ई इंटीग्रेशन सर्विसेज एंड द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन सी द हार्ड ड्राइव एक्सप्लेनेशन फ्रॉम द एग्जिबिट वी सी दैट द डिस्क इज इन द वी एच डी एक्स फॉर्मैट बिफोर यू अपलोड अ विंडोज वर्चुअल मशीन फ्रॉम ऑन प्रेमाइस टू माइक्रोसॉफ्ट अज्योर यू मस्ट प्रिपेयर द वर्चुअल हार्ड डिस्क वी एच डी और वी एच डी एक्स अज्योर सपोर्ट्स ओनली जनरेशन वन वी एम्स दैट आर इन द वी एच डी फाइल फॉर्मैट एंड हैव अ फिक्सड साइज डिस्क द मैक्सिमम साइज अलाउड फॉर द वी एच डी इज वन जीरो टू थ्री जी बी यू कैन कन्वर्ट अ जनरेशन वन वी एम फ्रॉम द वी एच डी एक्स फाइल सिस्टम टू वी एच डी एंड फ्रॉम अ डायनेमिकली एक्सपेंडिंग डिस्क टू फिक्स साइज क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी यू हैव एन अज्योर सब्सक्रिप्शन दैट कंटेन्स रिसोर्सेज इन द फॉलोइंग टेबल VM1 and VM2 are deployed from the same template and host line of business applications. You configure the network security group NSG shown in the exhibit. Click the exhibit tab. You need to prevent users of VM1 and VM2 from accessing websites on the internet over TCP port 80. What should you do? Now the options are option A disassociate the NSG from a network interface option B change the port underscore ET inbound security rule option C associate the NSG to subnet 1 option D change the deny websites outbound security rule and the correct answer is option C associate the NSG to subnet 1 explanation You can associate or disassociate a network security group from a network interface or subnet. The NSG has the appropriate rule to block users from accessing the internet. We just need to associate it with subnet 1. Question 21. You have two subscriptions named subscription 1 and subscription 2. Each subscription is associated with a different Azure AD tenant. Subscription 1 contains a virtual network named VNet1. VNet1 contains an Azure virtual machine named VM1 and has an IP address space of 10.0.0.0/16. Subscription 2 contains a virtual network named VNet2. VNet2 contains an Azure virtual machine named VM2 and has an IP address space of 10.0.0.0/24. You need to connect VNet one to VNet two. What should you do first? Now the options are: Option A, move VM one to subscription two. Option B, modify the IP address space of VNet two. Option C, provision of virtual network gateways. Option D, move VNet one to subscription two. And the correct answer is option C, provision of virtual network gateways. Explanation. The virtual networks can be in the same or different regions and from the same or different subscriptions. When connecting VNets from different subscriptions, the subscriptions do not need to be associated with the same active directory tenant. Configuring a VNet to VNet connection is a good way to easily connect VNets. Connecting a virtual network to another virtual network using the VNet to VNet connection type is similar to creating a site to site IPsec connection to an on premises location. Both connectivity types use a VPN gateway to provide a secure tunnel using IPsec IKE and both function the same way when communicating. The local network gateway for each VNet treats the other VNet as a local site. This Let's you specify additional address space for the local network gateway in order to route traffic. Question 22. You plan to create an Azure virtual machine named VM1 that will be configured as shown in the following exhibit. The planned disk configurations for VM1 are shown in the following exhibit. You need to ensure that VM1 can be created in an availability zone. Which two settings should you modify? Now the options are: 
ऑप्शन ए यूज मैनेज्ड डिस्क ऑप्शन बी ओ एस डिस्क टाइप ऑप्शन सी अवेलेबिलिटी ऑप्शंस ऑप्शन डी साइज ऑप्शन ई इमेज एंड द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए एंड सी यूज मैनेज्ड डिस्क एंड अवेलेबिलिटी ऑप्शंस एक्सप्लेनेशन ए Your VMS should use managed disk if you want to move them to an availability zone by using site recovery. C. When you create a VM for an availability zone, go to under settings and then high availability. Select one of the numbered zones from the availability zone drop down. Question 23. You have an app named app 1 that is installed on two Azure virtual machines. named vm1 and vm2 connections to app1 are managed by using an azure load balancer the effective network security configurations for vm2 are shown in the following exhibit you discover that connections to app1 from 131.107.100.50 over tcp port 443 fail you verify that the load balancer rules are configured correctly you need to ensure that connections to app 1 can be established successfully from 131.107.100.50 over tcp port 443 solution You create an inbound security rule that allows any traffic from the Azure load balancer source and has a cost of one fifty. Does this meet the goal? Now the options are: option A, yes; option B, no; and the correct answer is option A, yes. Explanation: the rule with priority two hundred blocks all inbound traffic. that involves the azure load balancer health probe directed to the vm that results in vm2 being considered unhealthy and the lb doesn't route traffic to it by placing a rule with the priority 150 that allows the azure load balancer traffic tag vm2 is discovered as functional or healthy the lb directs traffic to it problem solved question 24 You manage a virtual network named VNet One that is hosted in the West US Azure region. VNet One hosts two virtual machines named VM One and VM Two that run Windows Server. You need to inspect all the network traffic from VM One to VM Two for a period of three hours. Solution: From Azure Network Watcher, you create a packet capture. Does this meet the goal? Now the options are: option A, yes; option B, no; and the correct answer is option A, yes. Explanation: Network Watcher variable packet capture allows you to create packet capture sessions to track traffic to and from a virtual machine. Packet capture helps to diagnose network anomalies both reactively and proactively. Other uses include gathering network statistics, gaining information on network intrusions, debugging client-server communications, and much more. Question twenty-five: You have an Azure Directory tenant named Adatium and an Azure subscription named Subscription One. Adatium contains a group named Developers. Subscription One contains a resource group named Dev. You need to provide the developers group with the ability to create Azure logic apps in the Dev resource group. Solution: On subscription one, you assign the logic app operator role to the developers group. Does this meet the goal? Now the options are: Option A, yes; Option B, no; and the correct answer is Option B, no. Question twenty six. You have an Azure subscription that contains a storage account named Account One. You plan to upload the disk files of a virtual machine to your Account One from your on-premises network. The on-premises network uses a public IP address space of one three one dot one zero seven dot one dot zero slash twenty four. You plan to use the disk files to provision an Azure virtual machine named VM One. 
VM1 will be attached to a virtual network named VNet1. VNet1 uses an IP address space of 192.168.0.0/24. You need to configure your account 1 to meet the following requirements. Ensure that you can upload the disk files to your account 1. Ensure that you can attach the disk to VM1. Prevent all other access to the account 1. Which two actions should you perform? Each correct answer presents part of the solution. Now the options are. From the firewalls and virtual networks played of account 1, select selected networks. Option B. From the firewalls and virtual networks blade of account 1, select allow trusted Microsoft services to access the storage account. Option C. From the firewalls and virtual network blade of account 1, add the 131.107.1.0/24 IP address range. Option D. From the firewalls and virtual network blade of account 1, add VNet 1. From the service endpoints, blade of vnet1 at a service endpoint and the correct answer is option a and c explanation a by default storage accounts accept connections from clients on any network to limit access to selected networks you must first change the default action c from the firewalls and virtual networks blade of account 1 Add the 131.107.1.0/24 IP address range E is an incorrect option. When you enable VNet from the storage account, the endpoint could be enabled also from there automatically. Question 27. You have an app named App1 that runs on two Azure virtual machines named VM1 and VM2. You plan to implement an Azure availability set for App1. The solution must ensure that App1 is available during planned maintenance of the hardware hosting VM1 and VM2. What should you include in the availability set? Now, the options are Option A, one update domain. Option B, two fault domains. Option C, one fault domain. Option D, two update domains. And the correct answer is option D to update domains. Explanation Microsoft updates, which Microsoft refers to as planned maintenance events, sometimes require that VMS be rebooted to complete the update. To reduce the impact on VMS, the Azure fabric is divided into update domains to ensure that not all VMS are rebooted at the same time. And correct answer A. An update domain is a group of VMS and underlying physical hardware that can be rebooted at the same time. B and C. A fault domain shares common storage as well as common power, source and network switch. It is used to protest against unplanned system failure. Question 28. You have an Azure subscription that contains an Azure file share. You have an on-premises server named Server1 that runs Windows Server 2016. You plan to set up Azure File Sync between Server1 and the Azure File Share. You need to prepare the subscription for the planned Azure File Sync. Which two actions should you perform in the Azure subscription? To answer, drag the appropriate actions to the correct targets. Each action may be used once more than once or not at all. You may need to drag the split bar between pens or scroll to view content. Select and place. Now the options are Option A. Create a sync group. Run server registration. Option B. Create a storage sync service. Install the Azure file sync agent. Option C. Create a sync group. Install the Azure File Sync Agent. Option D. Create a storage sync service. Create a sync group. And the correct answer is Option D. Create a storage sync service. Create a sync group. Explanation. As question talks about actions on the subscription and not on the servers. First action. Create a storage sync service. Second action. 
create a sync group question 29 you have an azure subscription named subscription 1 you have 5 tb of data that you need to transfer to subscription 1 you plan to use an azure import or export job what can you use as the destination of the imported data now the options are option a a virtual machine option b an azure cosmos db database option c azure file storage option d the azure file sync storage sync service and the correct answer is option c azure file storage explanation azure import or export service is used to securely import large amounts of data to azure blob storage and azure files by shipping disk drives to an azure data center the maximum size of an Azure Files resource of a file share is 5 TB. Note, there are several versions of this question in the exam. The question has two correct answers. 1. Azure File Storage 2. Azure Blob Storage The question can have other incorrect answer options. Include the following. Azure Data Lake Store Azure SQL Database Azure Data Factory Question 30 You have an Azure Storage account named Storage 1. You plan to use EZ Copy to copy data to Storage 1. You need to identify the storage services in Storage 1 to which you can copy the data. Which storage services should you identify? Now the options are Option A Blob File table and queue. Option B, blob and file only. Option C, file and table only. Option D, file only. Option E, blob, table and queue only. And the correct answer is option B, blob and file only. Explanation. EZ copy is a command line utility that you can use to copy blobs or files to or from a storage account. And correct answers. A, C and E. AZ copy does not support table and queue storage services. D. AZ copy supports file storage services as well as blob storage services. Thank you for watching this video. Please do not forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Buy our AZ104 premium questions with 50% off. Check link in the description.